they, they realize they're not. I, I think that's why you're seeing the weakness of the church today. Um, have you ever heard of B.R. Lakin? He was an evangelist years back. Uh, we came to our church every year. He said back then, 25 years ago, he believed 70% of professing Christians were lost. Back then. He, you know, no one knows for sure, but he said from traveling around the country and the world and seeing the, the, the state of the church, the melancholy of the church, They'll come out to clean the campus, but when, they, when it's soul winning, nobody will show up. When it's min- ministry oriented, nobody will show up. Service oriented, everybody's here, but ministry oriented, nobody shows up. He said, something's not right with that. And he said, you need to have both. Your service proves your ministry. How can I witness to someone at work unless I'm willing to sweep the floor when no one else wants to? Sweeping the floor is my service. When I share the gospel with that person, it's ministry. When I make a sandwich for someone, that's service. I'm serving them with the idea that I can minister to them the Word of God later. When, I, when I'm a door greeter and an usher, that's a service with the idea that I might have an opportunity to minister to them later when they're leaving the church. And I'm watching them. I've been praying. I've met some door greeters at a church in Kansas City, and their whole goal is when they're greeting people to come for church, they look at them, they talk to them, they shake their hands, and they watch people during the service. And if they see someone struggling spiritually, when they walk out, they pull them to the side and say, I was noticing you did the service. Is there something I can do to help? That's ministry. That's when you take a service, and because of your idea of wanting to serve God in ministry, you make it a ministry. So we got to have both of them. So I think that is a weakness in the church. We, all in America, we have people who are claiming they're Christians but have never given their heart to Jesus Christ. Said a prayer but never given their heart. Um, so the Jew, the first one. The first mention of a Jew is found in 2 Kings 16, 6. And the word Jew is derived from the word Judah, which means praise. And of course, Israel is a people of praise to God. He, Abraham was a Gentile, but he was the father of the Jewish nation. When you look under the Hebrew, the first mention is found in Genesis 14, 3, and it means one from beyond. And that's literally, not just physically beyond another place on the map geographically, but the Jewish people were a chosen people by God. They were literally chosen from beyond the realm of physicality and a God outside of time and space. And you'll hear that a lot in these rules. We've got to understand that God is outside of time and space. He, he, he made time and space in Genesis 1, verses 2 through 31. That's when he made time and space. He's outside of all of that. And he chose the Jewish nation to be a peculiar people to physically show this world what the kingdom of heaven was all about, the physical kingdom. And only and there's only one time in their whole existence that they have seen that happen. That was under the reign of King David and part of King Solomon until it was divided into two countries. And they went into apostasy. And just recently, in 1948, have they come back as a state. And at the end of the tribulation, Israel is going to repent as a nation. Jesus will come, the second coming, at the end of the tribulation, and he will set up the physical kingdom that was physically shown under the reign of King David. That's why it's called the throne of David in the millennial kingdom. It's the two types being shown. So the Jews were especially chosen people. And when you read the Old Testament, from the Mosaic Law period, from the time that Jews came onto the scene, until... Um, Uh, Acts chapter 8 through 10 is when that dispensation specifically ends. That's when Paul was saved and Saul became Paul and he was given the mysteries of the church. The Jews rejected the spiritual application of the kingdom and that priesthood temporarily, the stewardship of it, was given to the church. We, the church. But from the beginning of Abraham until the uh, chapter 8, 9, and 10 of Acts, it's that's where it ends. Now remember, it's just on hold. Because at the end of the tribulation, and for a thousand years, it's going to be given back to Israel. So that's where the Mormons lose it, because they, don't, they believe God's through with Israel. That's where the Catholic Church loses it, because they believe God's through with Israel. Every religion that believes God is through with Israel, that's where they blow it. It's one of the places they blow it. Because God is not through with Israel. Have you ever seen the Lord of the Rings? And you got that white castle at the end called Ministereth, Ministry, Ministereth. And they were put right on the outside, outside of where uh, the Dark Lord was. 
And they were supposed to be the warning post for everybody else. But they'd grown complacent, and the enemy was growing stronger, and they didn't even know it. Think about the church. The enemy's growing stronger, and, and we act like we don't even know it. And, and we're not taking the truth to our workplaces. We're not taking the truth to our families. And we're not taking the truth to our neighbors. How many times have you purposefully met with your neighbors to engage them in spiritual talk so that you can lead them to the truth? Or how many times have you just had a cookout just to get to know them? Not even talk about spiritual things. Play backgammon or whatever you want to do. You know... And it, see, that, that's what we need to be doing as God's church. We need to be seeing our neighborhoods as our mission fields and doing everything in our power to see that happen. And that, that's where Gandalf comes in and all these different characters that, and the, the hobbits that really take on this quest. That's what we need to be. We need to be Christians who say, okay, we see a, a big institution called Ministerius and, and it's not getting done. We're going to do it. And I'm going to take it to my neighborhood if they don't. I'm going to take it to my workplace if they don't. And, but these two institutions need to be working together. The church and the people need to be working together so that we can make a difference in all of those areas. But for some reason, there's been a fragmenting of that. I believe when we get back to the Word of God as, 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 as accurately, 100%, 100% preserved, and we know how to study it, we can see that happen. And then... Um, so then we have uh, physical circumcision. The Jews were required to have a physical circumcision. I'm going to show you a picture in that. But in Genesis 17.10, physical circumcision from Abraham on. It never happened prior to that. But from Abraham on, it did. The eighth day, the male was circumcised on the eighth day. Now, how many days are there in a week? Seven. Seven. Which would make the eighth day the first day. Or new beginnings. When you see the number eight in the Bible, it's a reference to new beginnings. Because you got seven days, it's the last. And then Sunday, why do we worship on Sunday when it's not the Sabbath? It's not the Sabbath. It never has been, never will be. The Sabbath is Saturday. Why do we, why do we meet on Sunday then? Well, we're going to study that, but I'm just going to tell you, because it's a new beginning. We were breaking from the law, the bondage of the law, and Jesus Christ died on the cross and resurrected us from the dead to usher us into the dispensation of grace. It's a new beginning for mankind. And that's what this is here. The Jewish people were to be a physical people on this earth. They were supposed to show the world by their faithfulness and love to God that God has a new beginning for mankind, the dispensation of the law, the Mosaic dispensation, and, and we're going to show you the way. But they kept falling to idolatry. We do the same thing today, whether it's TV or magazines or radio or shopping or or. or Anything taken to an extreme can be a God in our life. Our families can be a God. If we love our families to the exclusion of God, that can be a God in our life. And we, just, we can't be too sour at Israel when they kept falling to these false gods and whoredoms when we do the same thing today in whatever situations we put before God in our life. So in 1710 it says, This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee, every man child among you shall be circumcised. The first mention is in Genesis 10:5, where Noah is called the father of the Gentiles. And since all the nations of the world come from his loins, Gentile means a foreign nation of people. It also means the heathen. That's the Gentile. Now we're off the Jews, now we're on the Gentile. The first mention of the Gentile, the second group of people, is Noah. Now remember what happened at the flood. Everybody was gone except Noah and his family. So if you believe the Bible... And you'll, and I'm going to use a weird term. I I, if you have, you have people in your workplace will poo poo this. Everybody in the world has no one his family. There's no way. And they just, what's the problem here? They don't believe the Bible. When you believe the Bible, everything else takes care of itself. And it is possible because prior to Noah, remember, people lived seven, eight, nine hundred years and had multiple childbirths at one time and <laughs> population exploded. What happened with Noah, and you can read Genesis chapter 10 and 11, and it outlines every nation on the earth, where they settled, where they went. And Noah went one place, Shem, Ham, and Japheth went the other, and from there the world was populated. But Gentile means heathen, or 